Good morning, everybody. Well, today is going to be another busy day. We have two sleigh rides today. Um, so that's during the time of 10 o'clock, I mean, uh, uh, during the time of 12 o'clock and 4 o'clock. So um, the two hour stretches that the people go out for. Um, but this morning, I'd like to hitch, um, not hitch, but drive Earl around the driveway a little bit. This is going to be his first attempt to actually drive. Um, Trudy is coming up today. It's Christmas week, so she has her vacation from her teaching job, and she's coming up to help me. Over the years, she's helped a lot with starting colts, so we'll get the horses harnessed up and uh, get started on this job to see if it works. Brenda's getting lady Hi. brushed and ready to go. Um, today for our sleigh ride, we did it yesterday too. We had one, two rides. Did we have two rides yesterday? Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, we had two rides yesterday, and uh, we actually used Lady and Ken together. I think that's the first time we've ever used Lady and Ken together for sleigh rides. Um, I felt that when I use Lady and Bill, Bill just tends to want to go so fast, and it's just not a heavy enough load to slow him down. And same with Buck. It just seems like I've used these two blacks for years now, but uh, Ken is just so laid back and would just soon walk and Buck would just soon run. And for sleigh rides, I really don't want that. Um, I'd like to have them trot a little bit for the people to get kind of a, uh, the feeling of that, but it's just a tiny little bit back to the barn. And most of the time I want them to walk calmly. So I thought with, with Lady and Ken, they would be a better team in the woods. But I, I really like a matched team. That's why I prefer having the blacks together and the chestnuts together. I also, when I'm doing sleigh rides, it's just so nice to be having a, a relaxed team that will just walk. And these lady and Ken seem to work better at that. Um, it won't happen today, but one of these times, I will take you on one of our sleigh rides and show you our pond and everybody else skating on the pond. It seems to be quite fun for people but uh, I just can't do it with any particular group because you kind of have to ask permission. So sometime when we have a group of friends over here, we'll show that to you. So let's go get Earl hitched up today, harnessed up. Um, I've decided I'm just gonna attempt Earl today and then we'll do another day with Duke. Um, this is Earl. For some of you uh, new viewers, this is a pair of Colts that I bought in March and they were just um, wheeling and never been fooled with at all and they've come a long long ways and they've grown really really well they had worms when I got them and now we got the worms out of their system and they're really growing good and um, I'm really happy with them I've done quite a bit of lessons with them of sorts and so today is going to be the first time to attempt to drive Earl this will just be line driving on the driveway so um, we'll, we'll start on getting them harnessed up first and then I will explain a few things about one of the ways I, I, I train horses, there's several different ways that I do it, and there's a lot of different ways that other people do it. And so I'm just gonna show you one of the ways that I do it sometimes. Okay, we had a video a couple, oh, I'm not sure when it was, a little while back, and I'll try to have Abby put a, um, sh tell you which video that is, I'll put it on the screen. And uh, you could go back and see our harnessing process the first time around. So these guys are used to harnesses a little bit, uh, I've hitched them, I mean, I've put harnesses on them several times now, um, and I've led them around the driveway um, with harnesses on, so they're fairly used to it. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining what I'm doing. If you're more interested in how I set, set up my harnesses, you could go back to that video and, and possibly learn a little bit from that. I see a little bit of hay on the ground over here I want to pick up. I got to do a little work on my mangers. These guys are growing so big and they're eating so much. My mangers aren't deep enough to hold all the hay that they want to eat. So I have to feed them multiple times a day to, of course, they're not inside most of the time. They're usually outside. But at night, I will come out at 4.35 o'clock and I'll feed them. But then I can't feed them their full amount. So when I come back out at 6.30, which I always do, to rewater them, then I will have to, I give them more hay. But if I had a deeper manger, they could keep the hay in the manger. So I have to be careful that they don't um, throw it out of their mangers. I try to shake the hay up to break up the flakes so they're less apt to throw it out of the mangers, but they still do sometimes. Get a... 
even now, this morning, I came out, my normal chore time is six o'clock, I come out and feed them all, and there again, I just fed them a little bit, and then when I come out at this time, you know, at seven o'clock, I come back out and start my work, and I will water them and give them a little bit more hay at that time. Hey guy, get up, get up, get over. So he lets me put the call on really nicely. And then I'll get his harness. Come here, get him, uh, get him, get him, get over, get over. Hey, get him. The harnesses fit fairly well, but it really isn't crucial at this time because we're just driving them around the driveway and the harness is just to get him used to having something on his body. I'm pretty excited. I think I've told you before, I've got a new set of harnesses ordered that Eli will be making for me very soon. Come on now, get over. Get over. Get over. Hey. There are so many things that horses need to be taught over the course of time. Here's a good example right here. Um, and I don't do this very often, but it just hits the belly girth. But I don't like to have him pushing this way because it just gets in a bad, bad habit. I need to keep him over there. And I should have even now, but for some reason he's, he's pushing against me. So I need to have him over there so I can work. And uh, you don't want to have the horse is pushing you and getting their way, which I just did just then. But uh, he's usually quite good, so I don't even think about it. But anyways, we'll put the bridle on now. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Maybe a little thing right now I could teach you if you've got horses, colts of your own. A horse that doesn't want to step over is just nothing but trouble. So you really need to teach a horse to do that. And there's several different ways at this stage that I do that. Um, a lot of times you just kind of pick your fights. Right now he's eating hay and, and he's still hungry. Um, if he's not hungry, they tend to mind and behave so much better because they're not hungry. They don't want to be, they don't need to be eaten, but right now he wants to eat. It's one of those times that you need to know when to pick your fights. And uh, so I'm not going to pressure him too much to act perfectly because I know he's hungry. He is eating. But uh, other times when he's not eating, it's, it's even more important. But see, it's even important now. But, but over time, they will learn these things. And so it's not a big deal. But anyways, so what I do quite often when a horse, I need to get the horse over, I would just take one finger and kind of poke him like this. And it, they're just more, I don't know, it affects them more. You can see their whole body twitch when I do that. And they just tend to push over better when you do that. I mean, it's just a good way to teach them. But if they don't do it, what I'll do sometimes is I'll take my foot, I don't know if you can see this, but I'll kick his feet. That helps push them over a little bit too. And same with the other side. You, you just kind of kick their feet, poke them a little bit, and they tend to learn to go over. So I'm gonna put the bridle on now. I'll leave his halter on. And he's very good about putting the bit in his mouth, or he has been so far. We've only put the bridle on him about, I don't know, four or five times. So the bridle's on, 
and I like to leave the bridle on for periods of time so that they can get used to that bit in their mouth. They'll be chomping at their bit quite a bit just to get used to it. Right now, it's gonna be a little while before Trudy gets here, so I'm gonna take the bridle off. I'm not gonna leave the bridle on. And even the harness, I don't like to leave them too long in their stall with a harness on at this stage. When they're older, my mature horses, they can spend hours in the barn with a harness on, it's fine. But colts tend to lay down a lot, lot more than the older horses, and you don't want a horse to lay down with a harness on. So I don't leave a harness on very long. Um, what I will do quite often, a little bit later in the training process, is I will have them both in harness and I'll take them outside and hitch them to my truck body that I have that I hitch my horses to quite often. And I'll let them stay there for, for hours at a time. Probably not so much this winter, but next spring, especially during mud season, I plan on doing quite a bit with them because I'll have the time because I can't be logging. A lot of times I'm sawing during that time in the sawmill. So it's a great time to just leave them tied for, for a long, long time out there and I'm close by but in the sawmill working so I can kind of keep an eye on them and it works really good for what I've, what I've found. So, but I'm gonna take his bridle off, although it's actually, it actually does him good to learn how to eat with a bridle on. It sounds kind of crazy, but uh, um, I, you know, yesterday I just put the bridle on and took him outside and just let him around just a little bit and I took him to the water tub and it was kind of comical watching him try to drink with a with a with a bit on and I'll show you that today and see if he gets if he's any better than yesterday so I will pull the bridle off Trudy will be here shortly and we'll go out and see about driving for the first time so yesterday I had taken him out he was kind of comical drinking and couldn't really get the hang of it. Now he's must be a little more thirsty. He's already been watered this morning, but he just dove right in and is drinking away. Doesn't seem to bother him at all. This bridle doesn't even have a doesn't even have a throat latch on it. Yeah, this one's here, but it's tied up into a knot and it's very too short. Tell your viewers what a throat latch is for. Well, this, this throat latch meaning it goes underneath his throat and hitches to the side to hold the bridle on. Are you concerned about the bridle coming off? No, not at all. I'm not saying it couldn't, but it's very unlikely. Just getting used to that. He's, um... Was he doing that yesterday with his mouth a lot? Actually, he's putting, he doesn't even know where to put his tongue yet. Sometimes it's over the bit and sometimes it's under the bit. So I've kind of been checking that, but he'll get the hang of it eventually. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to have Trudy lead Earl and then I'm going to slowly have her back away as I start putting pressure on Earl's bit. Now he has no idea what this is like. So sometimes a horse, you start putting pressure on their bit, they'll actually take off and try to run. So we just, the way I try to do it is kind of gently and Trudy and I have done this quite a bit over the years. And so she, I will tell her what to do as we're going along, but she will eventually back up and put no pressure on the lead rope. And I eventually am actually driving him. So um, what we'll do to start with is she'll just start leading them. I'll get the lines ready without any pressure on his bit, and we'll go from there. I'll try to explain as we go along. Okay, true. It's a pretty long lead rope too, so. Okay, as we've done before, I'll try to do the, the audio, so I'm, I'll tell him to go, and then you go at the same time. Okay. Cap step. So as we go along here, I'm gonna kind of steer him more so than stop him. I'm just trying to steer him. Um, and Trudy is gonna get a little bit farther out on the lead line so that she's really not doing the steering I am with my lines. And of course he has no idea what that's all about, 
but as I'm turn, turning side by side, he is kind of getting the hang of it. Cap step. And he's doing somewhat what I'm telling him to do. I'm going to be stopping and starting him as we go along, and Trudy's just going to be listening to me. And as I do those commands, she's going to follow up and do it with me. Ho! Oh. Ho! Oh. So what I did is I just very lightly pulled on the lines, but she, Trudy actually stopped the horse because she's the one on the halter, and that's all he knows right now. As you have seen over the t over time, okay, let's go ahead, Trudy, cap step. Over time, we've been training him, and some of the training has been on the the sled that I use, and so when I when I was moving the sled, I would tell him to go with my commands, and then when I stop the sled and the big horses, I would hollow my commands out loud enough so he could hear them. So he has somewhat of an idea of what the commands are and how they work. So we'll look, see if anybody's coming up the road. No one's coming up the road. And yes, there is. So we'll keep right on rolling, Trudy. And let's get off the road. So all I'm, I'm doing with the lines basically is steering him. He's swinging his head back and forth and I'm trying to keep his head straight, which is not a hard thing to do. He's doing very, very good. Okay, Trudy, I'm gonna stop him. Oh! So there again, I pulled the lines a little bit, held a little pressure there, not a lot. And Trudy probably actually did the actual stopping with the halter because she stopped and so he stopped. Now he stands really good, but I'm not going to let him stand here too long. Okay, Trudy. Cap stop. Cap stop. So there again, I, I'm doing the commands, but it's still Trudy that's actually leading him. Like I said, this is the very first time he's ever done this, so he's doing just excellent so far. And uh, it's not like... Cap stop. It's not like uh, at the end of this session I'm going to be driving around and he's work going to be working perfect. It just doesn't work that way. It's a, it's a long process to train a horse. You need a lot of patience. And help does come in very handy. To do this without Trudy helping me, it'd be a little, little bit, a lot harder actually. I'd thought of some other ideas with the sled, but it wouldn't have worked, in my opinion, quite as good as this does. Okay, Trudy, I'm going to stop him. Oh! Again, I put just enough pressure on his bit so he starts getting used to that bit and what's going on there. And he's listening to my voice also. But it's still, Trudy leading him is making, is really what he's following right now. But eventually, she'll get less and less. Even this next time around, we'll, we'll, I'll have her start backing up a little bit. Okay, Trudy, we're ready to go. Cap stop. Cap stop. You see, he didn't really go until Trudy put a little pressure on that line. It's very important at this stage to have good lessons. Things can happen, and he could spook over something, and then you could have trouble. Careful, careful, like him right here. Careful, careful, careful step, careful step. But see, when I'm, when he's having troubles like that, he's still used to being led. And so that kind of overtakes me trying to drive. Cap stop. Cap stop. Different spots will freak a horse out a little more. For him going onto the black top like that, doesn't really freak him out, but just he did uh, misbehave a little bit. Okay, we're gonna try something really quick here. Trudy, I want you back up a little bit. And we'll see if he can kind of go without of course, he has blinders on, which is a good thing. He can't see her. And he thinks he's... Oh. Oh, good boy. It was just a short little stretch, but it, he... He was actually doing it on his own. Okay, so Trudy, I'm going to have you go back ahead now and lead him. Calf stop. Calf stop. We'll go around one more time, and that's all we'll do for today. Cap step. Cap step. 
a colt will get sour. I like to say, call it sour. Um, they'll get sour really fast. If you really try to do too much with them, especially at this young age, a lot of times I won't work these colts that I have until they're quite a bit older than this. This is probably, well, I guess over the years I've done quite a few this at this age, but uh, keep right walking with her, him, Jude. But there's been plenty of times I don't start them until they're three years old. But this is an easier way to do it at this young age, but it just takes time. Okay, Trude, I want to try one more time with him walking semi on his own. So, cast up. Okay, leave him ahead and back up again. Cast up. Oh, he's not ready for it. Okay, go ahead and lead him. Kept up. Like I said, I had no one, I had no expectations of him to be just going on his own this first lesson. Lesson. I'm very pleased with what what he's doing, how he's doing it. Head right to the barn, Drew. We'll stop once or twice before we get there. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. Oh, oh. Now, when they, when you go to stop them, and they don't want to stop, you actually, actually, you actually have to release your lines because it's not going to do any good to keep on pulling harder. Oh, I cap us out. Oh, oh. But what I do when I stop them, I put a little pressure on, and then I release it because if you keep on pulling, he'll just cause trouble. I cap stop. Oh. Oh. Hey, Trudy, I want you to go to the end of the lead rope and go way up ahead of him. Oh. 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 No. I cast up. Oh. Oh. There again, I'm pulling on the lines, but it, he really didn't stop until he got to Trudy. And, but that's okay. That's perfectly fine. I cap step. The more he feels the bit in his mouth. Oh, oh. The more he'll get better at this. Oh. I cap step. Oh, oh, good boy. Oh, okay, there's probably a lot of people there are thinking, wow, he didn't really do that well. Um, not in my opinion, I thought he did really well. Um, being the first time out, sometimes with horses, if you have too high of expectations for them, you're only gonna be disappointed. Having just small little progress going is perfectly fine. And I would say he did excellent, didn't you? Although I saw you try to bite Trudy once. That's not good. Yeah. So anyways. Oops. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this little lesson that we had with Earl. Um, we'll keep working with Duke and Earl both. And uh, I hope I can help you along with your colts as you um, start training yours if you have any or just uh, I just hope you enjoyed the video whether it's for training or just for entertainment and uh, I it's the last day of 2021 and so I want to wish you all a, a, a wonder, wonderful year coming up and uh, yeah I hope you have a great day